So the cognitive reflection test is a really, um, it's, an, it's an interesting idea. It's sort of this idea that, you know, if you think about judgment, intuitive judgment, sort of there is a, you know, s a system in our head that, that, you know, will jump to conclusions rather quickly. And uh, there's a reason why we have the system. I mean, it, it helps you tremendously if you want to, you know, decide whether you should run away from that tiger or, or you know, many other things, right? But, um, you know, the question in, in, in the forecasting context is often, you know, okay, on the one hand, forecast uh, intuition allows us to, to process a lot of information quickly, but on the other hand, we shouldn't jump to conclusions. We should try to reflect on, um, our intuition, and that's sort of this idea of cognitive reflection. Can sort of our our brain hit the brakes, you know, and, and not kind of do the thing that that comes to mind first, but actually, um, you know, take a step back, think twice, and um, you know, double check whether your intuition actually makes sense given the, the the data that you have in front of you. So we first gave them this this cognitive ref reflection test, and we we kind of knew their score, and then we we gave them a relatively simple forecasting task, which is, is really sort of you get a time series of data and you have to predict the next point in that series, which is, you know, uh, again, a, a very simple forecasting task. And, and uh, you know, it allows you to relatively easily measure how good people are at predicting the next point in the series. And, um, and, and yeah, well and behold, I mean, since we can measure sort of the forecast error in that and we can measure the cognitive reflection test, there's a very strong relationship between how, how people, well people do in this cognitive reflection test and how, how small their, their actual forecast error is in the, in the forecasting task. If you look at the scores, I mean, the, the people who score very badly in the cognitive reflection test also score very badly in the, the intelligence test. So, you know, from that dimension, they that that's the same. But if you move to the spectrum of the people who, who are, you know, very intelligent or above average in their intelligence, their cognitive reflection scores are really all over the board, right? They can have very low or very high cognitive reflection. And so that's sort of where we, uh, where, you know, the, the correlation splits, if you will, where, where there isn't a, a huge association between these two values anymore. And, um, and so, you know, it was natural to basically say, okay, if we want to predict who's good at forecasting, you know, what would we use? Would we use the intelligence test or would we use the, the cognitive reflection test? Or, you know, does, does one explain more than the other? And, uh, and again, there it's very clear that um, uh, the cognitive reflection test, despite being so short, just three questions, predicts quite well, um, even if you control for intelligence. Uh, and 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 basically it predicts more than than actual intelligence. So uh, again, the the, um, the conclusion was that yeah, cognitive reflection really picks up something else, um, picks up more than just general intelligence tests, and um, and works quite well.